Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about writing the equations of absolute value functions just by looking at the graphs. By now we should be fairly comfortable translating and reflecting graphs on our own, so let's take a look at different absolute value graphs and see if we can determine what the equations of them are. So if you can recall from a previous screencast, I mentioned the concept of being able to look and find the vertex just by looking at the equation. Some of you may recognize this uh, from prior, prior screencasts. Uh, some of you might not. But if we have the vertex V at x coordinate h and y coordinate k, we can actually locate where the vertex is just by looking at the equation. So here we can see there's your h, there's your k. Okay, so if we look at this graph, right, we should be able to identify where the vertex is just by looking at the graph and be able to plug it into an equation. So here, let's take a look at this graph. So the graph here is certainly a translation. What's going on? Well, where's the vertex? Can we see the vertex? Yes. Right? Should be pretty easy. We know the vertex is at negative 3. Right? We can all see that. That's no secret. Right? So now let's see if we can plug this into an equation. Well, I basically outlined the process of doing this, right? So from here, right, we can just plug and chug. So we have f of x equals the absolute value of x minus a negative 3, which will give us a plus 3, plus k, which is 2. And there we have it, right? This tells us that our graph should be shifted to the left 3 and up 2, precisely where we are, right? Not too challenging. Let's take a look at another one. So let's take a look at this graph. We have certainly another translation. Okay. The vertex has certainly been shifted. Where's the vertex? Well, again, it's as simple as locating where it is on the coordinate plane. What's the x-coordinate? We know the x-coordinate is 4. We know the y-coordinate is negative 5. Right, so our vertex is here at 4, negative 5. Can we plug this into our equation? We should be able to. Right? We have f of x equals the absolute value of x minus h. h here is 4, so it's x minus 4. Plus k, plus a negative 5. And just to keep it simple, I'm just going to write negative 5 there. So there's our equation. Fairly straightforward, and it's not really that painful. Once you, if you can look at a, a graph and find out where the vertex is, you should be able to give the equation. Okay, I'm going to give you one more tricky one, and we'll go over it together. Then I'll give you a few on your own to practice, and we'll look, talk more about this in class tomorrow. In this graph, there's slightly more going on. Um, First of all, what do we notice that's different from this graph than in the previous two graphs that we talked about in today's screencast? You all should be able to tell that this graph is a reflection, right? which tells us what? It tells us that there's going to be a negative sign in front of the absolute value. So we actually find this graph the same exact way. All we need to do is find out where the vertex is. So here, the vertex is going to be the x-coordinate, which is negative 7, fairly easy to find. The y-coordinate is negative 2, once again, also fairly easy to find. Right? We just plug this into our equation. We get f of x equals the absolute value of x plus, or I'm sorry, x minus a negative 7, which is x plus 7, plus a negative 2, which is just minus 2. Right? The one thing that I've left out is the reflection. Since the graph is flipped over, we know that there's got to be a negative sign in front of the absolute value. So that is really the only wrinkle that we'll see. Right? That's the only real curveball that can be thrown at us. Right? If we see that the graph is reflected, we know that we just got to put that negative sign in front of the absolute value. Right? Everything else is the same. Okay, so I will give you a few to practice on your own and you will go over the stuff in class with your teacher. 
So as promised, here is a few problems to work on on your own. I have given you four separate problems all on the same coordinate plane. So when you're doing these out, just write orange, blue, green, and purple next to the problem so that we can figure out whether or not you're doing these problems right. That is all for today. The more you practice these, the better off you'll be and the more confident you'll be.